crowd building here in the Maravich Center. Game number three for both of these teams. LSU trying to go 3-0 and for the second straight year to open the season. And the Privateers own the basketball first. This is Preston Murphy giving it up on the right side. And an inside bucket pumped home very early. Good job by Simeon Kirkland. Great quick curl of the basket and some outside defense down in the paint missing for LSU. That was a little too easy for the Privateers. Great start, though, for UNO to come down there, have one dive to the basket uncontested and get it up off the glass. Let's take a look at the lineup for LSU. It's Hill, it's Miller, it's Wilkinson, Williams, and Reed. That's the opening quintet. A three ball is no good, but the putback is good put back by KJ Williams and he is so strong on the defensive and offensive side of the glass the privateers can't leave him open like that as you take a look at the starting lineup for the privateers with Vincent Wilson Rouse Murphy Jr. Tyson Jackson Simeon Kirkland is coming off of a hand injury but for the privateers to play on the inside you can't let KJ Williams stand there uncontested for a rebound KJ Williams grabbing the defensive rebound Miller takes another three it's a little off mark from the wing as you mentioned, uh, Victor Kirkland is coming off a broken hand, uh, so he's been sidelined a while, but he's back in the lineup. Turnaround three, bingo! From distance, a quick release by Caleb Wilson-Rouse. That's his fourth triple of the season. Tigers will try one from the other wing this time. Wilkinson can't get it to go. And the team in blue, the Privateers, with a 5-2 lead in the very early going. Kirkland lobs it down low. It's grabbed, and there's a bumping foul, and Tyson Jackson will go to the free throw line. Jackson will be the first to the stripe. Well, there is the injured Jordan Johnson. He is the leading scorer for this team, but he's not available to play because of an ankle injury. Yeah, the 6'1 guard who transferred from University of Denver, averaging 14 and a half points a game, had 14 in their win the other night against St. Francis, but out with an ankle, and because of him being out, Head coach Mark Schlesinger told us before the game, one of the things he might want to do is slow the pace down a little bit, kind of dirty the water a little bit, if you will, make it kind of a, a struggle game and not play with this LSU pace with Jordan, uh, Jordan Johnson on the bench. But so far, it's the privateers have been taking the pace to LSU. Tyson Jackson misses the free throw. He's 5 for 7 now on the year. Now 6-2 lead early. The privateers up by 4. Wilkinson looking inside, kicks it to his teammate for a long three, and Justice Hill tickles the twine with that three ball. That's his first bucket of the game. This is a guy who had 63 triples last year for Murray State. That's a bunch. The privateers were playing a little zone defense to try to respect the outside shot from LSU, stretching that zone, but the Tigers were able to still get that open shot by Hill. So in the early going, LSU has disdained the inside play and has already shot several three-pointers. Five field goals attempts for LSU so far early. Four of them have been from deep. Adam Miller 0 for 2. Vincent gets rid of it quickly to Murphy. This is Wilson Rouse. He loses the dribble. It's picked up by LSU's Wilkinson. Down to Hill. He'll spot up, take the three. In and out. That one went down and rattled away. Good defense by LSU. You're going to hear those tennis shoes squeaking a lot tonight. It's a man-to-man -man defense that Mac McMahon plays. You won't see him go to zone. His Tigers will work at each and every possession in the man-to-man -man defense. Six-five. The team in blue with the lead, another three. It's off right, goes out of bounds without touching anything. You know, you talked about McMahon's preference, his penchant for man-to-man -man defense. Only under special circumstances will he go to a zone. It doesn't happen very often. No, and that'll be something that he would adjust in-game if needed. You might see a little token pressure if they were to do it. They being LSU, that might look like a zone, but they're just waiting to get in the half court where they'll play that man to man defense where you see the privateers now. Zone defense bringing the ball up the floor, back down into their 2 3 zone. Justice Hill gets rid of it to Adam Miller. 
Back to Hill, well away from the bucket, 10 on the shot clock. Hill uses a high pick, takes a jumping three, and nails it. Justice Hill racks it home. That's two now for Hill, one from each side of the floor, and we'll see how long it takes for the Privateers to stretch that zone defense a little more. LSU with its first lead at 8-6. The pass to the top, broken up. That one knocked away. And the Tigers will take a three as the ball goes low, comes back outside, and Milani Wilkinson drains a three ball. So after an early bit of a cold start from out court, LSU is heating it up from beyond the arc. We have now eight field goal attempts, seven of them from deep. LSU has scored nine straight points to take an 11-6 lead. Three ball left side. Yo, yes. String by Wilson Rouse. He had three trays coming into the game. And that was his first one tonight. Back to the zone for the Privateers. And LSU throws it away. Could not connect with K.J. Williams. We'll take a timeout right here. 15.38 to go in the first half. LSU, after trailing early, now leads 11-9 over the Privateers from New Orleans. The Privateers through their reclassification to get back up to Division I. An outstanding 12 years. Has, look, his record's at 45%, but he has built a program, and he continues to build it for the privateers and success they've had in the Southland Conference. And he also does some very special things off the court we'll talk about throughout this ballgame tonight. It's one of the best stories in college basketball that many people don't know about. Well, like a lot of Southland Conference programs, Victor, and you know this very well, this, these are teams that will play up. They'll play in games they're not expected to win, quite honestly. They do it for financial resources, and they, they save their energy. They save their preparation for league play. And it's a great way to grow when you're trying to learn your team, too. Yes, he's got some returners back, uh, some returning players back, but it's good experience. They're going to have another one of those. They're going on a big West Coast swing, as you see a foul there. LSU trying to move the ball up in transition. They're going to have four games at home, but then they're going to go up and they're going to play at Portland. They're going to play at Boise State. And then right before Christmas, they'll play at Purdue. And then their next game will actually be their opener in the Southland Conference against Houston Christian. So some good challenges for the Privateers. And, of course, it starts here tonight against LSU. Schlesinger is from Indiana, and he went up and played uh, Butler to open the season for the Privateers. That's touched last by the defensive player. LSU was running a nice set play off of the baseline inbounds. Privateer is able to get a hand on it. Kamani Doughty touched it last. 15 minutes left in the first half. Williams, who can shoot the three, hands it off. It's fumbled by Hill. He goes down low. Turnaround spinning shot draws the foul. And limping to the free throw line is Derek Fountain. Fountain out of Holly Springs, Mississippi. He played last year at Mississippi State. Take a look again as he's going to get position down on the post. We'll see the ball swing around. Here comes Hill, top of the key. There's Fountain right in the middle of your screen, and you see how he goes in. Used his inside hand instead of trying to go left hand from that side of the basket, but drew the body contact to send him to the free throw line. Fountain, a 6-10 forward. Drops in the free throw. It will be interesting to see how the many tools in this toolbox for LSU come together and who will emerge as this season progresses as the main contributors and those who get the majority of the playing time. Fountain converts both. The lead is four. I think one of those who will be the most interested is the man you see at the bottom of the screen scanning the purple uh, pullover, and that's Matt McMahon. Yep. He's starting to really get comfortable with the guys in the squad, but still a lot of testing and seeing different lineups, who can play with who. And a lot of bumping down low and an offensive foul away from the ball. And it was on Tyson Jackson, big number five, the 6'9", 245-pound junior. He was trying to get position down there on Fountain. Just saw him at the free throw line, and Tyson Jackson just elbowed him right out of the way down on the block. LSU will try to expand its four-point lead. This is Hannibal. Trey Hannibal gives it up to Hill. Hannibal takes the return pass, splits a couple of defenders, and is tied up. A good play by the defensive pressure from Dowdy. The possession arrow favors LSU. 
18 seconds on the shot clock. Tigers trailed by a bit early, now lead by four. A 9-0 run, reverse things. Williams down on the baseline, back to the bucket, dribbles once, fades and fires, in and out. Rebound battered around and then grabbed by Daniel Saki. Saki has been troubled by some injuries. He's uh, one of the point guards for this team. He was iffy, a game-time decision in terms of his availability to play. But we do see Daniel Saki in the game now for UNO. Hannibal takes the jump shot right wing, won't go. Saki lopes into front court. Quick shot by LSU. It's going to come to a grind here in terms of scoring after LSU had that big scoring outburst with the three-pointers. Coming out of the last timeout, neither team has really found any rhythm. We've only seen the two free throws by Fountain. That's been it. Jalen Reed, a 6'10 freshman from Jackson, Mississippi, comes into the ball game. You might remember his father. His father, Justice, or Justin, was an All-America at Ole Miss, an SEC Freshman of the Year in 2001. He was a four-year starter, really one of the Rebels' best players in history. Well, he, he led Ole Miss to the first Sweet 16 appearance, had an outstanding career in Oxford. As you take the three-pointer off the board, another offensive foul for the illegal screen for the Privateers. And let me tell you, Jalen Reed, as you mentioned, a 6'10 freshman, he's got some growing to do and he's got some learning. He also has some hops. If you get the opportunity or if he gets the opportunity, he will show it off. That man can get off the floor in a hurry. Yes, he can. He brings a pogo stick with him and uses <laughs> it. LSU by four. Again against the zone. The big guy put it on the floor and nearly made a mistake with it. Kick out to Miller, left side, left-handed shot, no good. Reed battling for the rebound as he went up and avoided the foul. He went up behind a defensive rebounder and still managed to keep it alive. Yeah, Miller off on his three-point shooting tonight, 0 for 3, and there you see able to keep it alive. Mark Schlesinger to the right of the screen was looking for the foul over the back or off of LSU, but Jalen Reed battled it, knocked it off a privateer. LSU keeps it with 18 on the clock. This is Reed, well away from the bucket. Dribbles once, makes a nice backdoor pass down to Hill, and a foul called, or did it go out of no, bounds? That's a, block. that's a clean block. That's a heck of a pass by Reed on the bounce pass to thread that needle. But watch the effort at the end. The bounce pass is coming right at you. Great pass underneath the defender, but look at the quick hops there by Kamani Doherty to get that block cleanly, knock it out of bounds. He's a sophomore from Brooklyn, New York, and that tipped up and in by Derek Fountain. Good strong drive by Trey Hannibal. He missed the layup, but Fountain was there to clean it up. Four points for Fountain. UNO has had five turnovers in the last five minutes. It's been a problem, ball security, for the privateers over the last five minutes. And there is a sixth turnover. Hannibal on the run, scoops it up, draws the foul, and scores. Let me say this about Trey Hannibal. He was one of those top four scorers that made the transfer from Murray State. Tiger fans are going to love watching this young man play. 6'2", solid 215. Look off the loose ball. Six turnover for the Privateers in this string. And look how he takes it up. Lynn, I was so impressed. We had the chance to do their season opening game against Kansas City. My initial impression of Trey Hannibal, he is afraid of nothing. He will take it to the basket. He is not afraid of contact. Look how solidly he's put together. He's so strong, upper body. Body, has no fear of getting to the basket like he did there to draw the foul in the and one. And he converts it. Last year, he averaged nine points and a very respectable five rebounds. And even more impressively, he was a better than 50% shooter yep. from the field. 52% from the floor. I'll take that all day. 18-9. LSU has now doubled up the privateers. Three ball off the dribble is no good by Vincent. And the Tigers will try to expand their lead. This is Reed, and he throws it away. Got a 7-0 run for LSU in the last 238. The Privateers still struggling there on the offensive end to get anything done. The Privateers have had six turnovers in the last six minutes. So after an effective start by the visiting team from New Orleans, 
ball security has become an issue. Yeah, and those turnovers have led to the fact that this had 16-3 run over six minutes. And Mark Schlesinger, one of the things he said, I cannot allow my team to get caught up in the pace that LSU is going to want to play. You have to try to slow it down. And so far, after that quick start that they had, it has not worked. Jackson's shot is kept alive momentarily and was then thrown off an LSU Tiger. And it will stay with the privateers. Ball. But remember how exciting it was this year when LSU hosted Southern from right across town. First time ever, and it was packed. People, just the environment, the city around it. I think it's great to see the in-state schools get to see, play one another and come to Baton Rouge. It's a great opportunity for them, and it's good work for LSU. The privateers have gone a long time without any kind of offensive flow. And they've only taken three top, uh, three shots since that last time out we had under the 16-minute mark. They're over three from the floor, but six turnovers on the game that have led to eight LSU points. And it's been a four-minute-plus drought for the privateers. Nicely done by Williams. Justice Williams, the sophomore from Philadelphia. Played in 20 games with one start last year. LSU leading 20 to 9 now. Vincent can't shoot from the corner. Shot clock at 8. Looper off the window, rolls and dribbles away. Kendall Coleman, who played at Northwestern State earlier in his career, pulled off the rebound. Another three ball by Adam Miller, and he's been off the mark with everything so far in the first half. And I'm used to seeing Miller miss like that. Four field goal attempts, all of them from behind the line. He hasn't hit one yet. He'll take his first time out of the ball game and go to the bench for LSU. It's only a matter of time for Miller usually. He's got eight trays on the year. And that's the highest total for this LSU team. The Tigers by 11. Williams rolls inside. He wants it. Instead, LSU settles for the three. Justice Williams tried to pump another one home, but missed it. And it will go to the Privateers with 10.42 to go as we approach the midway point in the first half. One of the things the zone defense will do, we pack it in the paint, so it sort of invites you to try from the outside. Even though LSU has stretched UNO's zone defense a bit, the Tigers are still launching from deep. They just haven't found the range as of late. Ten attempts from behind the line. LSU just three of ten so far on the night. There's finally breaks the skid of scoring for over five minutes for the Privateers. Wilson Rouse hitting that one. He's three of six on the game, but three of four from the high line. In fact, he has all three of the Privateers' three-pointers. Rouse came into the game with three made triples. He's a 6'2 junior out of Chicago by way of the University of the Pacific. A floater off one foot goes down for Justice Williams. So he's come off the bench, taken three shots, and nailed two of them. One a three-pointer, and that deuce. 22-12, slapped away by Coleman. He was waiting in the weeds, went up with a left hand and rejected it. Well, and that's confidence in your ability to get the block because there was no other help side defense. Look at the empty lane he has to the basket, but that's just a size advantage. Coleman at 6'8", 230, who just timed that jump perfectly to get that block. A step back beat deuce by Vincent is long. LSU's Coleman rebounds. Quickly up court, a half court pass, three ball right side. It nestles home for Hill. It's been the one man that's found the range from deep for LSU. LSU's 4 of 12 now from behind the line. Wani Wilkinson has one. The other three are from Hill, three of four from deep. He's got nine points. And he is the game's leading scorer. Along with Rouse for the Privateers. 9.15 to go. First half, 25-12. LSU leading. The Privateers in blue on the basketball. Another one of those transfers coming in for LSU. Cam Hayes, the 6'2 guard. Played at North Carolina State. 
just entered the ball game. In fact, that was him on defense on the wing. He's played in one game this year. He's looking for his first points and first rebound. Nine minutes and some change remain in the first half. Victor Howell and Rollins with you. Thank you for spending some time with us, perhaps at your sports bars at home, watching on a variety of potential devices. And another three ball is up, and this one is banged home by Milwaukee Wilkinson. No privateers jumped out of their zone. Defense went man to man down on that possession. Two passes for LSU and a cut on the baseline. Wilkinson found himself wide open on the wing. He's got six. And another foul away from the ball. This will be the second one on K.J. Williams. I can take another look as you see the drive by Cam Hayes. I said the wing, but Wilkinson finding his home where he really likes it, that corner. The dribble penetration draws some help defense and some eyes on the ball. And when Hayes got under the basket, he just kicked it out. Found Wilkinson wide open in the corner to hit that three. That's his second converted triple. He's attempted four. LSU by 16. Eight and a half to play. That's fumbled away at the top of the key and stolen by Coleman. This is Hill on the curl. Takes it down. Scoops with the right hand from the left side. No good. Tipped by Coleman. No good. And a whistle. That was a great effort to keep the ball alive. But Tyson Jackson, big number five for the privateers, trying to tap it out from underneath the basket. But he was standing on the baseline when he went to tap it out of bounds. So the Tigers will keep possession. And Hill will trigger it from the baseline. With 20 on the shot clock, eight minutes and three seconds to go in the first half. This has not been a wire-to-wire -wire lead for LSU. The Tigers trailed early. That's Darius Washington you're looking at on your screen. Just came in for the Privateers, 6'8", 230. And now Daniel Sackey, who played briefly off the bench a couple of minutes ago, returns to the lineup. a little bit long it bounces high off the rim takes another bounce wouldn't go for Hayes two Tigers that time were battling for the defensive rebound and knocked it away from each other knocked it into the privateers hands and that's nearly thrown away the privateers have been troubled with turnovers in the first half Shows you how good this man-to-man -man defense is in. Put another good effort on the baseline trying to save it. That defense has been squeaking some sneakers for LSU. It's causing frustrations for the privateers. Who once again are in a scoring drought of two minutes and 54 seconds. 7.32 to go in the first half. L the shooting of this man, Juice Hill. Two of nine on the season from behind the line, but here tonight so far in the first 12 minutes and change, he's three of four. In fact, has nine points, the leading score for LSU and tied for leading score in the ball game. So while Adam Miller, who we focused on in his three-point shooting to start the broadcast, is 0 for 4, Juice Hill has picked up the pace. He's three for four and already topped what he's done through the first two games of the season. And that output has led to a 16-point lead for the Tigers. Eight on the shot clock. That's deflected, yet another turnover. And what a recovery there was by Derek Fountain, who fell down, got back up, and then got in the passing lane and deflected that pass. Hayes, Hill, Wilkinson, Reed, and Fountain on the floor right now for LSU. Hill snaps a pass down to Fountain, and he turns and lays it in. That was a beautifully timed entry pass. This is the largest lead for LSU this year. And that's why they tell you on defense, you don't turn your head away from the ball. You always have to have eyes on ball and eyes on man. Privateers turned around and never saw the pass coming on a great cut under the basket. LSU looking for its third consecutive victory to open the season. And right now, this is the biggest lead that LSU has enjoyed against any of the earlier competition 
and the privateers. And another turnover there for New Orleans, courtesy of the defense of that man right there, Derek Fountain. Last possession, he falls down, gets up to flex a pass. Look at this one. It's just one-on-one. -on -one. There's nobody else there but Fountain and his man who's driven the ball, Spencer Sa uh, Sims, and Sims, excuse me, and he just for forces another turnover. That's now nine for the privateers. I think maybe they're going to add now. another one. Yeah. Ten. Excuse me, they're now in double digits. And by the way, 13 Tiger points pending this possession off the turnovers. The privateers have yet to score off an LSU turnover. And the Tigers only have two. Reed hands it off to Juice Hill. Justice switching dribble. Left hand, right hand. Goes left side, shoots the high arching three. It comes up a little bit short, and the rebound is snared by Wilson Rouse. Down low it goes, and a foul call. Reed called for the foul. Six oh nine to go. LSU leading by thirty to twelve in the first half. Privateers desperate to find something to work on the offensive end. One of the last nine. And it was such a good start over the first three or four minutes, and then things started deteriorating in a hurry for the Privateers. Jump hook no good from nine feet. I remember early in the game, too, they found a couple of open three-pointers, hit them consistently, and had the confidence, but this man-to-man -man defense has caused the Privateers fits trying to get into any sort of offensive motion. And Miller lost the ball, but he was fouled. The longest scoring run for LSU this year, Victor, has been 11 points. Tonight, there have been a couple of nine-point runs, and right now, LSU is on a 10-0 run. So if Miller is able to bag both of these free throws, this would be the longest scoring run of the season for LSU against any team. Here's the 10th. Make it the 11th consecutive point. Miller has not missed a free throw this year. He's six for six, now seven for seven. I'm glad you said it. I was going to say it, but I held it back because I didn't want to be the reason of the jinx. I don't believe in that stuff. All left-handers are good free throw shooters, aren't they? <laughs> hey, that's right. That's right. I remember you were. One of the few things I could do consistently. There's a whistle on the dribble and a... Perhaps a hand check foul. Jalen Reed was trying to hold up with Tyson Jackson. Jackson had position. That's Reed his second foul. Over. LSU now has scored 12 points in a row. And that's the longest run of the season against any team. That's pretty good when you got two nine-point runs and one 12-point run in the first half alone. I was just looking. We took our first time out under the 16-minute mark at 15.38, and we just passed 5.38. So it's been 10 minutes. The privateers have scored three points. Step back, Deuce. Comes up a little bit short. Miller runs the rebound down. Here comes Hannibal. Dribbles behind the back. Kicks it back to Miller. Miller lobs it down low. It's collected. Coleman lays it up. Coleman scores. Coleman is fouled up. And again, really nice ball movement and anticipation from out court down low. And they're going to get Daniel Sackey on the foul. And why? Because he's standing under the basket. No other reason other than 5-9 is standing up there trying to go up against 6-8. And Coleman just powered right through him and over him to the basket. Got the contact and drew the foul. So that's 14 points consecutively. And Coleman looking to stretch it to 15 straight points. Go back even further. He makes this free throw going back to what I mentioned that time out at the 1538 mark. And this is the free throw with the putback is short. Is it? And couldn't get it to go. 23 to 3 run for LSU since that first time out at the 1538 mark. Step back three in the air and nothing but twine from the right hand of Dowdy. That's Dowdy's first three-pointer of the year. He was 0 for 4 prior to that one. Miller still having trouble finding the range. He's missed everything from out court in the first half. UNO, or rather the privateers on the run, and the miss is tipped in. Beautifully tipped in by Doty, or Dowdy. No doubt about that one for Dowdy. 34-17, LSU has doubled up 
The privateers just over four and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Take a look at the break here coming off there, trying to draw the contact. Didn't get the call, came up short on the layup, but a great job of following up on the play to get the putback. That's and my that, favorite camera angle of all time right there. Behind the backboard. You like that when the action's coming right at you. Oh, you do. Because of bodies hitting the floor, the officials called timeout because they had a privateer and a tiger that slipped. Looked like they were pushing each other, but they were both just slipping because of the wet floor. Hannibal will walk it up. He calls out thumbs down play. Dribbling with the left hand. Now the right hand. He sends Coleman away from the ball. Now Coleman sets up a pick. Hannibal dribbles a couple of times. He's had the ball a long time. Kicks it to a new player in the game for the Tigers. That's Sean Phillips. And Sean Phillips tried to flush it. A seven-foot freshman from Dayton, Ohio. Phillips takes up a lot of space in the lane. He's lucky to get called for a double dribble there. I think they might have missed one when he tried to gather. But, boy, he was trying to make his presence known with some authority going in for that dunk. As the privateers fouled him to send him to the free throw line. He has not reached the scoring column this year until that free throw. That's his first point in a Tiger uniform. Seven foot, 245 pound freshman out of Dayton. Played for Dream City Christian. He also played in a winter circuit of basketball. It's a circuit of elite high school basketball players that get put on sort of these all-star quote-unquote games and they go around and play in leagues. And Sean Phillips is named the Defensive Player of the Year. It's called the Grind Session. He was named Defensive Player of the Year during that little tournament and also shot 62% from the floor, which tells you he had no problem getting the ball close to the basket and then knows what to do with it. And the seven-footer bags both free throws, and once again, we've got a whistle away from the ball. Well, he also just threw Tyson Jackson out of the way. Did Phillips, so that's his first foul. That's 6'9", 245, trying to post up on 7 foot, 245, and the 7 footer said, excuse me, I'll take this space, please. And just threw him out of the way. Jackson came into the game, four out of five at the free throw line. Coleman battles for the rebound and grabs it. This is Hill. Juice dribbling against defensive pressure from Murphy. Phillips sends it to the right wing. Miller is in trouble. Hannibal is there. Pull up jump shot. No good. And a foul away from the ball, I think. Unless it was on Murphy. We didn't call that on Murphy. And we will step aside right here. 3.43 to go in the first half. LSU 30. Of what just, Justice Juice Hill has done at the point guard position. But, boy, they give you a little bit all over the floor. You have Hill running the point guard position and distributing. You've got the size with K.J. Williams, and then you've got the aggressiveness from Trey Hannibal, who loves to take it to the lane and earns way to the free throw line, so they contribute on every aspect on the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, it's interesting the differential between the three types of players that we just looked at. There's Hannibal, one of them. You've got Mr. Inside, you've got Mr. Outside, and now you and, and Hannibal who can Is take Mr. it down low. <laughs> Mr. I'll go wherever I want to go. That's pretty much it. LSU has only missed one free throw tonight. Check it, make it two free throws. But a good performance at the stripe for the Tigers. The foul is called against Justice Juice Hill. And stepping to the stripe is Tyson Jackson. Jackson started his career at Middle Tennessee. He's averaging 10 points this year in a couple of games and one rebound. One change that they, that they did on the call. He held up three for a while, but then he added the four. The foul yeah. was actually on Sean Phillips, the big man inside who was going up against Jackson. Five on the shot clock. This will be a deuce if it goes, and it does for Tyson Jackson. He was straddling the three-point line. And Juice had taken his man all the way out, almost to midcourt with his man-to-man -man defense. Had to bail out towards the end. 
But then he was able to find a wide open man with two seconds to go to shoot it from the top of the key. I think Matt McMahon was looking, saying, where were you? Where's my defense? Hill tries to wrap it around and get it down to Coleman, but throws it away. Yeah, that went a little bit wide. A little bit wide, a little bit of a force. Coleman had some position. It wasn't the ideal position in the middle of the lane. Watch, it's going to come at you. You see Coleman got his man on his backside. If Juice takes one more dribble to the screen to the left as you're looking at it, backside. If Juice takes one more dribble to the screen to the left as you're looking at it, he would have had a great angle to get it to him. But he tried to get a little fancy with the spin on that pass, and it bounced out of bounds. Murphy brings it into front court with 2.40 to go in the first half. 37-21, LSU leading comfortably. Still only LSU's fourth turnover here in the first half. And they have forced a bunch of them, double-figure turnovers for New Orleans. Privateers have 10. Tigers have scored 13 off of that. Nothing has made a huge dent as of yet, but all of a sudden a team that took forever to score of applause. It is one of the best things going in sports because it shows you it's much more than what we're doing watching this game and more than what you and I are doing just talking about the game. He has such a great heart for the Special Olympians. He does three or four camps a year that his team is involved with at the Lakefront Arena. But I wanted to make sure we congratulate him. It's such a great story what he does at the home games for all the Special Olympians. Your point is so well made and it's not for show. That's where his heart is and has been for a long time. He's got a couple of adopted children and uh, just just a wonderful human being. It's great. That, that's why I say it's one of the best stories nobody knows about because he doesn't do it for the publicity. And you mentioned his kids. He told me before the game, making his way to Baton Rouge as LSU drives. And we're going back and forth. Can't, nobody can get a roll. He's driving to New Orleans for tonight's game. Got a phone call. His fifth grader made the school basketball team and was so excited to tell his dad that he made the team. By the way, while we've got a minute here, I'm going to climb into the uh, personal chair and, and just mention with Victor, we've been together 20 years now, Victor, doing LSU basketball, and it, it, it just seems like a blink of the eye. But 20 years ago, you and I first started sharing the, the microphone and, and working with some fantastic production people over that period of time, including our LSU sports production team, this year that's been together almost intact without change for eight plus years now but uh it, it's a pleasure and and uh you're my safety net i deeply appreciate <laughs> oh, it. it is it is we have a great time i can't believe it's been 20 years my goodness we've seen a lot of great talent both on home teams visiting teams met some great coaches and players it's been fun fountain strokes the free throw <laughs> Derek Fountain looking to make some good memories at LSU, but he certainly has some good memories against LSU. Lynn told you earlier, he played at Mississippi State. His freshman year when he faced the Tigers, that's when he scored his season high. He scored 20 points, had seven boards in that game. 15 of his 20 came in the first half. Tiger fans might remember that game and wish they didn't for the outstanding performance he had as a freshman. 18 is the lead now with two minutes to play in the first half. That's tipped away by Coleman. Coleman has been very active off the bench in the first half. Williams takes it down and draws the foul. He went down hard, but I think he's going to be okay. But well, he'll take a couple of uh, ginger steps, walking gingerly, but he'll step up to the strike. I can see it both ways. I can see that you go flagrant because he hit him. He swiped and hit him across the head, as we're going to get in a description now coming over to tell us. I can see it because he took a big swipe and hit him in the forehead, but if you're looking for intent, I don't think the intent was there. Not I think, at all. I think he just missed him. Williams blew past him, went up and under with the ball, and he just flat out whiffed and hit him. If nothing else, it gives Justice Williams a chance to solidify his health and can't convert the free throw. He'll get another one. One shot coming. Five points for Justice Williams. And possession belonging to LSU. Juice Hill will trigger it. Miller looking for his first three. Still 
over in the first half from distance. As you mentioned, it's not going to stop him from trying. That's his shot. It's what he does from the outside, especially. But he just not as not found it tonight. All six of his field goal attempts have been from behind the line. He's missed all of them. Has two points coming on free throws. And now he'll get a goaltending there as he turned his head. Had a breakaway from his man to the basket. Slapped it on the backboard. That's one of the best sequences offensively, though, for the privateers. See how he's not looking looking at the ball? He doesn't see his man. He's just kind of stuck, stuck in no man's land. And it's a great job by Rouse to make a break to the basket. Lead pass took him right up to the layup. You can't slap the backboard. Almost four minutes now. In fact, it will be more than four minutes with this possession. If LSU doesn't score without a field goal, Tigers over the last five. Fountain lines up the three and drains it. Put an end to that. One coin in the fountain. It's his first three-pointer of the season. Forty-three twenty-three. Another takeaway for LSU. Derek Fountain bending over and swiping the dribble. Miller works down low, scores with the right hand from the right side, and that's his first bucket of the game. I'd like to see that. You kind of hit from the outside. You know what? Go a little closer. Get something going, get some confidence. He takes the one-handed scoop and takes the layup. McMahon at Murray State. Then they took care of the Chicago Bills. They got a Bulls, rather. They got it off night, so he's up here enjoying the Tigers action. Pelicans are going to be a problem. C.J. McCollum, who came over from Portland, you got Zion back and healthy. They're going to be a problem for some people. Willie Green, their head coach, outstanding young coach. Here we're in the closing minute of the first half. LSU, which trails six to two to open the ball game, leads comfortably 45-23. Murphy hands it off to Saki. Back to Murphy. Down low it goes. Double team down there. And it's forced up and in. And there's a whistle. Boy. Well, Tyson Jackson using his muscle and well, determination. Yes, indeed. He was determined as right. He just used his brute strength underneath. Watch as he has white jerseys converging on him. Good post-up position, throwing some elbows, two white jerseys, and he just bulldogs his way up there, powers it in over Coleman, gets it to go. Jackson now has seven points on three of five shooting, two rebounds as well. Three players, one offensive guy, and two defenders were trading bruises down there prior to the shot. And Tyson Jackson. This is the free throw long. Coleman grabs another rebound. Now one of five from the free throw line is Jackson. Look, when you're going to play that strong, you know you're going to draw some contact. One thing you want to work on, free throws, is you know you're going to be going to the line a lot. Miller snaps it down to a wide open fountain. He blows the layup, but he was fouled, and he has really upset at himself. Jackson committed the foul. 20 fouls now in the first half combined for these two teams. Look at the great look away by Miller, which opened up that zip pass down to the block. Just disappointed he couldn't finish. Nice follow, but the foul occurred ahead of time. So back to the line we go. Fountain. Knocks the first one down. Good shooting first half for the Tigers from the free throw line. 12 of 15 from the line. Yep. 80% with one to go. Cam Hayes checks in for LSU in the final seconds of the first half. He's a 6'2 junior from Greensboro, North Carolina, by way of North Carolina State. This is the second game in which he's played for LSU. Now 6'6 six six from the free throw line is Fountain. Was that a foul? Out of bounds. Yep, nope. Privateers were out of bounds on that that sling play from in front of the bench. That's 15 turnovers in the first half of the Privateers. Let's we'll see it with LSU. Remember in the game opener, they, they had a situation like this with 3.2 in the clock, and they banked one in. Miller from midcourt. It comes up short. And we will say goodbye to the first half. LSU is 90-0. and 90 and none. Free throw opportunities 
for the privateers in the first half. I was mentioning that earlier. If you're going to be that have that kind of size and play that physical underneath, one aspect of your game you have to work on, hit free throws because you are going to earn opportunities at the line. Don't give those points away. Two players in double figures at half. Derek Fountain leads everybody with 13. And Caleb Wilson-Rouse has 11 to pace the privateers. New Orleans in blue. It was turnover plagued in the first half, and it starts with another quick turnover as uh, Preston Murphy lost the dribble down on the baseline. Good defense by Juice Hill, who just reached behind him and slapped at the ball and knocked it off of his knee. 16 turnovers already. And just four for LSU. 16 points for LSU, so basically a point a turnover. That ball almost went in. Miller tried to lob it down over the rim and get it to K.J. Williams. K.J. <laughs> Williams was, was pretty silent. And it might have been as close as Miller's come to hit a three. It could that, have was, been. that was supposed to be a pass, and it almost went in for him. K.J. <laughs> Williams only with two points, two rebounds in this first half. Normally, he approaches a double-double. This a three-ball line drive, no good, and the rebound plucked by Jalen Reed, the 6'10 freshman from Jackson, Look Mississippi. End to end. One little window for Reed who took it end to end, and he found that open and took it right to the basket for the that, dunk. That's his first bucket. The Tigers take it over again. And a low pass. Hill knew that he goofed on that one. You don't want the big man to have to reach down to his shoe top. No, no, a little too much juice from juice on that pass. We've got 6'10 standing there on the block, and he put it like five hole in hockey, went right through the legs. 49-25, LSU leading comfortably. Shot clock at seven. Shot clock at three. Not a lot of movement from guys in the blue. And a desperation three launched by Tyson Jackson. No good. Oh, the officials are saying it knocked off of Reed after a great steal. Oh, he pointed the wrong way. Yep. Yeah, the official pointed the wrong way. At first he pointed that it was back to the privateers. That's the right call, but it was good defense. And then he corrected it. He told... The privateers, no, I, I made the wrong call. So Reed will trigger it. It's Hill, it's Wilkinson, it's Williams, KJ. It's Reed and it's Miller for LSU on the floor to open this second half. Hill spins, scoops it up with the right hand and goes down on the deck and he was fouled. Two tough, shots coming. Tough up and under here. You're going to see it from the baseline. So he's coming right at you. Good quick spin move. He sees the big man and Tyson Jackson tries to go up and under to avoid the contact, but gets the contact. Or he'll go to the free throw line. Third foul now on Tyson Jackson. That's a rare miss tonight for LSU at the free throw line. Now 13 for 17. Juice comes into the game, a 67% free throw shooter. And there is point number 10 for him tonight. It's two in double digits now as Fountain leading the way with 13. Hill now with 10. It's two tigers. Routes has double digits for the privateers. He's the only one. Vincent waves it around, kicks it left side, entry pass down on the right wing. Spinning move on the baseline, now spinning back toward the middle, and a nice jump hook. Knocked down by Simeon Kirkland. That's his second bucket, four points. Transfer to New Orleans, did Kirkland from UAB. Played all 32 games there. Started 25. That's been a pretty good program out of the uh, Conference USA. Williams at the top takes a three on line, but a little bit long. Don't think that K.J. Williams cannot shoot three balls. He had 94 of them last year, number 12 in the country. 
was one of those rare opportunities tonight for him to get a shot. Williams only had two shots on the night before. Taking that one, that's his third shot. He's one of three on the night. Yeah, he's been very quiet in attempting shots, very reluctant to this point. And he's a guy who uh, is pretty good for double figures and rebounding and scoring just about every night, normally. The foul was called on Jalen Reed. That's his third, so he's now on the LSU bench. Tigers by 23. Murphy leans over the dribble as he brings it up. Wilkinson defending, gets picked off. Murphy turns and fires, left it short. Fountain sails in for the rebound. That's his fifth. Miller goes down in a collision with the defender. And here come the privateers. Miller almost took it away. On the baseline, spinning and a shot. Or rather, a pass goes to no teammate. Picked up by LSU. This is Fountain. Puts it on the floor once. Kicks it out to Wilkinson. He will not take the three. And now the Tigers will back up. Yeah, that's a good reset for LSU. A little bit out of control on both ends. Try to settle it down. And... Well, cleaning it all up yep. is LSU's K.J. Williams. Just as I was saying, settling it down. Juice goes to the basket, loses control, but bounced right into his teammates' hands to get the bucket. We played four minutes. That was a dandy pass into the hands of Jackson, but he couldn't finish. What a tight window. I'm surprised that ball got there. Might have surprised him as well. He zipped that ball in there like that. But when you're that close, you have to convert. He threw a chiclet through a donut right there to get it into the, the hands of the shooter. Williams. Fountain. Not from there. Miller will take it. There's the first three of the night for Miller. Kind of lifts his hands a little bit like, finally, where has that been? Oh, he is a classy, very effective, very accurate outcourt shooter. Is Miller. LSU seeking its 27th consecutive victory against a Louisiana opponent. And we'll take a timeout right here with 15.02 remaining in the second half. LSU is out in front of the Privateers. It's 55 to 20. Stretch. How about that? Welcome that, to the conference, indeed, my friend. <laughs> indeed. That's a sandpaper type start, isn't it? Rough indeed. By the way, Murray State, McMahon's old team, beat number 24 Texas A&M tonight. 88-79. There's a bucket blasted home by Kamani Dowdy. But 88-79, Murray State takes out Texas A&M. South Carolina also got blasted by Colorado State. 85-53. to Kick out Williams. He dribbles away from the bucket. Now stops. Shoots, misses long, put back up and in. A strong offensive rebound by Kendall Coleman. Coleman has been uh, affected tonight. He's played hard off the bench. Taking two field goal attempts. He's hit both of them. Six rebounds as well for Coleman. You know, when you hear coaches, Lynn, talk about games like this where you're trying to learn your players, and especially this year, you got a new coach, so much newness on this team, 7% of the scoring comes back, you lose so many players, you bring so many new players in. This is the kind of game that coaches talk about as you see another three-pointer there, Doty hits again. I'm not sure how many times this year we're going to see Fountain leading the scoring for LSU as they go inside and get a bucket with the man I'm talking about who now has 15. Yep. You know, how many times are you going to come in the game where you see Aaron Miller hit one three-pointer on eight attempts? And K.J. Williams not involved in the offense at all at tonight. All. Yeah, three field goal attempts. So this is where you kind of let guys step into role and show me what, what do you have? How are you going to fit in in certain situations? And that would Matt, that's what Mac McMahon uses a game like this for tonight. Coach McMahon wants to find out what these guys can do in certain situations and how he can use them on the floor. It's getting a bit sloppy. Kirkland on that last bucket, and that flush attempt goes awry. Dowdy missed it, but the follow is good. Well, it's a great job by Wilson Rouse to come up there for the follow-up because nobody else ran down the floor. You can't assume he's going to make it or get blocked. 
He was the only man heads up to follow the play and get the easy layup. That'll drive coaches nuts. See one people other, to stand there and watch. One other final from the SEC. And that is Kentucky beat South Carolina State 106 to 63. But Texas A&M was defeated tonight, and so was South Carolina out of the league. So things are rough in College Station? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Seven minutes have elapsed in the second half. Henry takes it right down the, the lane. Fountain was holding his ground. Offensive foul. Yes, indeed. That's great defense. Matt McMahon almost to midcourt clapping his hands. Great job by Fountain to slide over. He knew his man was beat coming down the lane. The 20 slides in. He knows the contact is coming. Stood there and took the charge. K.J. Williams replaces Kendall Coleman for LSU. See how he left his man to the right side of the screen. He just slides right over. He knows he's going to get contact. Draws the charge. Great job. Great job of help defense. Williams gets in trouble and travels as he was slowly sliding down the side of the defender. And he's hurt. Let's hope that slip didn't lead to something much worse. This is Justice. Well, it's good to see him be able to get up like that. Let's Sean go take a look at his ankle. That ankle turns sideways. Trey Hannibal checked into the game for the Tigers. That's him defending. Or I beg your pardon, Cam Hayes checked into the game. Henry threw the charge, uh, drew the, the call there. Mark Lester saying, wait a minute. He's swinging elbows, trying to get three, uh, trying to get free on the inside. But Henry got called for the contact and the foul. The lead is 23 for LSU. The largest lead has been 28. And an offensive foul against the Tigers. It's called against... Cam Hayes. Cam Hayes, yep. So when LSU has gotten a shot off, the Tigers have done well. They've hit four of their last five. Problem is, LSU also has four turnovers in the last minute and 50 seconds. That ball was tipped. It was not an over and back violation. LSU takes it away anyway. And a little showmanship. <laughs> Hill decided to take it himself. Now, is he going to get credit for the assist? That's what I want to know. You set yourself up for that big bounce pass. Is that a stat pack or assist and dunk? Whoa. Back the Tigers go with a rim rattling dunk from Trey Hannibal. That brings the crowd to its feet. Oh, those two guys know how to do it, having played together. And, Mur and flushed it easily yeah. off his own pass with two hands. That was my question to you. The self-bounce pass, is that an assist in the dunk? And had he gone off the backboard, would it have been an offensive rebound? I like that. In other <laughs> words, you, you work on the triple-double with one exactly, play. Exactly. You're packing the stats there a little bit, but it's also a highlight play. Plenty of time left in this second half. LSU out in front by nearly 30. This match is the biggest lead for the Tigers. Then there'll be a bumping foul against Fountain. And we will step aside right here and be right back. 63-35, LSU leading the New Orleans Privateers with 11-12 remaining in the college basketball world. How about this defensively for the Tigers tonight? 16 of the 21 turnovers by New Orleans were steals. 
Derek Fountain has a career high seven steals in this game alone. Well, number 20 has come to play tonight. And a foul is going to be assessed against Ward. Tyrell Ward in the game for the first time, a freshman out of Washington, D.C. He has played in one of the two previous LSU games. A lot of expectations around him, too, as a 6'6 freshman. Played at the Matha High School, one of the most widely known high schools in the country. It's located up there in the D.C. area. Shot clock at four. This for three. Rebound Fountain as it bounced out deep. Hill behind the back. Back to the left hand. And his entry pass is slapped away. Nice play by Simeon Kirkland. 22 on the shot clock. 10.43 remains in the second half. With a bucket, LSU can take a 30-point lead. Fountain has had a lot of minutes for LSU tonight, hasn't he? This for three from straight away. Bingo! K.J. Williams. We called for it earlier how he hasn't really been involved, and he has just three of five from the floor. Seven points, Williams. Hasn't taken a lot of shots, but you know what? Tonight he hasn't needed it. So many others have stepped up to play. Leaning left-handed offering does not quite get there by Dowdy. And Fountain is looking to go to the bench right now. He'll get a rest. Tigers insert Jalen Reed, and they bring back Mawani Wilkinson as well. Well, you'll take that stat line any night, huh? 17 points, 8 rebounds, 7 steals. My goodness. Yes, my goodness. Fountain right now making a case for LSU player of the game. Privateer is stuck again in one of those droughts and involves turnovers. Hayes rattles at home, a floating jumper. Cam Hayes, and that is his first bucket of the game. It's his first bucket as a Tiger. Nice look inside there. Kirkland just couldn't get it to go. But nice stayed, bounce pass. Kirkland stayed with it, got his, got a rebound, and he'll he'll be rewarded with a couple of free throws. We can hit one of these with the first point for the Privateers in almost four minutes. Yeah. And again, it's been the turnovers have been the problem. That's that's one thing Matt McMahon, when he looks at it, he will like to see. First of all, of course, you'll be impressed by the number of steals. That's a stat that just stands out. You rarely have ever seen numbers that big in the steal category, but his Tigers have converted those turnovers into points, too. Better than one point of turnover. How many total steals? 16 steals for LSU, just wow. three for the Privateers. Wow. As you say, that's almost an unheard of number yeah. of steals. And even though your turnovers have climbed a little bit now, the Tigers are in double digits with 11. You've only given up four points off of turnovers. You have more than 20 off of there. So all of those numbers leading the right way for the Tigers. That's one win thing he won't like about is K.J. Williams didn't block out and gave a rebound to Marquez Cooper. He then steps back and drains the three. Marquez Cooper playing for the first time. Those are his first points this year. That triple right there, the first bucket of the season for Marquez Cooper. The lead is 30 with nine to go. Hayes takes it down low and scores with the left hand. I'll give the assist to K.J. Williams, who realizes the clock was winding down. He went up top and set a high screen. It wasn't much, but it was enough to free up the man and get into a lane. And Cam Hayes took it the rest of the way. He's got four points in this game and four points on the season. K.J. Williams just lost possession that time, had it in his hands, just fell out of bounds. 8.41 to play. LSU trailed early, 6-2. to two. But the Tigers have held the lead 
for the entirety of the game with the exception of about two minutes. That's a bucket by Tyson Jackson. It's been a little while since he scored now. Nine points for Jackson. Meanwhile, look at LSU's offense on your screen. Seven of seven on their last attempt from the floor. There is a collision, and the Tigers will be shooting free throws. It will be Jalen Reed at the stripe, the freshman out of Jackson, Mississippi. Handling it from the top of the key. See, look how wide open the lane is. All four other white jerseys out by the three-point line. Just open up a lane for him to go one-on-one -on -one and take it to the basket through the contact. I suspect his former All-America dad, Justin Reed, from Ole Miss, who was just so good for four years there, is in the audience tonight somewhere. You know, when you and I had a chance to talk to Matt McMahon before the season started, we asked him about Jalen Reed. He said he's got tremendous upside. McMahon commented that at 6'10", he can do things that he's never had a chance to coach before. He said how much fun it's been watching him develop to this point and how much fun it's going to be watching him to continue to develop, get stronger in his ability here. Well, he's been a starter in the early going for LSU as a rookie. Yeah, he comes to town. He's ranked the seventh best forward in the country in his position. One more shot coming. That's going to be an accidental foul. Wani <laughs> Wilkinson tripped. He tripped himself, and by going down, tripped a, a privateer player. It's purely an accident. Calling him a foul for tripping. This privateer team has been outclassed tonight in some areas, but it's still playing hard. There is no quit in this team from New Orleans. Well, we remind you that without their starting point guard and leading scorer, Jordan Johnson, and as much as we talked about Matt McMahon using this to test out different lineups and players, certainly Mark Schlesinger is doing the same thing, watching the way his team responds to adversity. Jalen Reed appeared to slap that one cleanly, but he was called for the foul. And we yep. in three days. Those, those three games in three days are part of the UNO Big Easy Classic presented by Embassy Suites. They'll have a tournament there. Then their fourth home game will be against the Raging Cajuns come making their way down from Lafayette. And then that's when they go on that road trip I mentioned earlier. They go up west. They'll go to Portland. Then they'll face Boise State. And then right after Christmas, right before they open up conference play, they'll be on the road at Purdue. And then they'll open up conference play against Houston Christian. Wilson Rouse nestles in the free throw. It gives him 14 to lead the team in blue. By the way, so far here in the second half, LSU's game field goal percentage has improved from 52%. But why? In the second half, LSU has hit seven of their last seven, 10 of 12 overall, 83% from the floor in the second half of the Tigers. That's monstrous. Wilson Rouse, by the way, with 15 points. That's a season's high for him. He missed the third game. Seven and a half to play. Tigers out in front, 71-42. Rebound cleared Coleman again. by LSU's Coleman after the miss by Bell. Reed hanging in the air, draws the foul as he scores. Oh, it's a great strong take by Reed, hitting his second field goal. Has five rebounds tonight, three fouls. He had to leave the game a little earlier, but watch the confidence here. One little stutter step, does a great jump stop, and then just muscles it up. As Marquez Cooper is trying to man him up, and he's able to get it in, strong arms it in, two of two from the floor with this free throw coming. He scored with the left hand, did he not? Looked like it. There's a bump, and I believe the foul was called against Tyson Jackson. It was. Two shots coming. It's 35 combined fouls. It just feels like more. 
we've had very few spurts of just playing up and down yep. the floor with maybe an occasional turnover right. or knocked out of bounds. There's been a lot of fouls here tonight. Marquez Cooper misses the first one. Seven minutes to go. We'll take a look at LSU's upcoming schedule in just a moment. The privateers have not shot the ball well from the free throw line. Now four of 11. And Cooper almost made the steal as he anticipated the pass to the wing intended for Ward. Ward will put it in play. Coleman hands it off. Three ball by Hayes. Rattles it in from deep on the left side. It was a nice shot by Hayes, but it was made even nicer than the fact that Preston Murphy was right in his grill. He took a step down to the left side behind the line and shot it with a man in his face and put it in. So Hayes, who had not scored in one game prior to this one, has seven tonight. Cooper for three. And a foul on the rebound. Reed grabbed it. Foul on Coleman. Yep. He was on the opposite side of the lane. You see here in the second half, Privateers is one of seven from behind the big line. The Tigers 75 percent, three of four. So free throws coming for Deontay Bell. He's a sophomore from Shreveport. Phillips clears the rebound. So the seven-footer in the game. We played some in the first half. The whistle came before the pass. Cooper called for the foul. Once again, you saw that drive. I mentioned it earlier about Trey Hannibal, how fast he got to the lane. It was a great dish for the dunk had he not been slapped to draw that foul. But Hannibal blew past his man all the way down the lane and then dumped it off to the right side for the dunk. They're going to give him two shots. Only Hannibal may have known that. And the second shot coming now. With 6.07 to play. Preston Murphy works it up into front court against the defensive pressure from Hayes. Murphy swings a pass left side. Cooper lets it fly. No, excuse me. That is a three-pointer from Wilson Rouse. That's his fourth three. Good kick out. Nice drive. Find him wide open there. He's got 18. 18. Still the only privateer in double digits. There are two with nine. He's still the only one by himself. We're closing in on a 20-point night. His career high is 19. Oh, he did it again. Hayes is showing a little something. His confidence to shoot with a man in his face. That puts him with 10 points. LSU's Reed pokes it away to start it. Reed to Hayes. Left side it goes. Hannibal pulls up and fires. And a whistle on the rebound and a foul on yeah, Reed, Reed, is it? Yeah, yeah. Reed pushing the back. That ball fell into his lap a little too easily. But that's because he had a little shove in the back on the defender. And it comes with 5.06 to go. LSU leading 80 to 46. Free throws coming from Deontay Bell.
Tyson Jackson returns to the lineup and Deontay Bell will go to the bench. Schlesinger there, you see the bottom of the screen, doing a little coaching with Deontay Bell as he left the game. Give him words of advice. Reed lobs it down low in traffic. The seven-footer's got it. And he gets tangled up with the defender. And a foul called. This will be a... That's be number five on Kirkland. Yep, it is. And what's amazing... He had he had the better position in the ball coming to him, and that's just a seven footer using his size and length. Literally just reach around and grab it. Take a look at the pass. Kirkland's got good position. That pass should be a lot higher for a seven footer. But look, he just rips it away, and then he winds up getting the, the contact on the slap down there by Kirkland, who fouls out of the game. So it's Dowdy, Bell, Jackson, Wilson, Rouse, and Murphy in the game now for the Privateers. Hannibal Hayes, Reed, Ward, and Phillips for LSU. And Phillips will try to hit the second free throw. He looks good at the line for a seven-footer, doesn't he? Very confident, of, very smooth. A little bit of a knuckleball release on that last one, but I like the result. Hasn't he bagged four in a row? I believe you're right. Let's see. Yeah, four for four from the line. There's a fall away three. I was going to say, a good shooting night for LSU all overall. 18 of 25, 72% from the line. How about Wilson Rouse, though? 21 points. That's by far his season's high. His career high in Division One was at Santa, against Santa Clara. Had 19 for his career high until tonight. A nice effort that he'll remember for that. You bet. Shot clock at two, and it's on the money from Hayes. Of Way course. back on the sideline because he had a man in his he had a man in his grill. 13 for Cam Hayes. He had not after this game, and then Wofford on the 27th of this month. We slide into December with a December 2nd affair against UT Arlington, Wake Forest, and then North Carolina Central. Also next up for LSU. Just under four minutes to go. And LSU is leading 85 to 51. Phillips was called for the foul. And Tyson Jackson will be shooting free throws. Jackson played at Middle Tennessee State before making yep. his way to New Orleans with the Privateers. And while he was there, he made the all-freshman team for Conference USA. He was the only player to start all 32 games last year. He reminds me of a little bit bigger version of uh, LSU's Trey Hannibal. Built solid. Yeah. What you're saying. Sure. Hannibal Hayes, Reed, Ward, and Phillips on the floor right now. Ward with a very long three. No good. The tip attempt. There's Hannibal. Hannibal got way up. Mistimed it maybe a little bit. And Phillips with uh, a foul. And no doubt about that one. That was a body bump. Jackson has certainly put in the effort tonight in the to a poor defensive posi uh, position, sure. but but uh, I, I didn't see anything deliberate or flagrant about it. Possession will be retained by New Orleans. Oh, 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 oh. 
Shot talk at eight. Nice entry pass down to Jackson. Spades fires, and he scores off the window when he was fouled again by the seven-footer. Now, I think on that one, they're going to go take another look because I it looked like right. he shoved him after the foul. That's, That's a this wackadoo. One. Right, watch. Here's the power spin move. He gets him off his feet, and there's that right there. He was kind of off balance, but it, it when you get put two hands into somebody's chest right there. They've already flagged his attention. I saw the official give the signal. Yep. Uh, Arthur, you count the bucket? Two shots coming. And then possession. Jackson with 11 points now. Thirteen for Tyson as they update the scoreboard. Make it 14 now. No, now they go back to 13. Jackson hasn't had trouble with that first free throw. It's the second one that's been causing him trouble. Again, as physical as he is, as hard as he plays, that's one thing you want to work on. You're going to be getting opportunities. Not worried about tonight. Just looking forward, getting the conference play. Well, your point is so well made. He's he's been to the line 11 times tonight. He's only converted four of them. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you're putting in hard work, getting beat up down there with this physical as you're playing. You want to work on the free throw line. I mean, these aren't free because he's earning these trips to the line. That's a really nice move by Deontay Bell to slip by some interior defense. 85-58. LSU leading as we come to the 240 mark. UNO on a 7-0 run. Hayes tries a three. It's collected in the corner by Hannibal. Back to Hayes. Left side. Three ball up. Three ball in. Tyrell Ward. Tyrell Ward. And that's his first bucket as a Tiger. Yeah, that's a great job of swinging the ball around, too, by the Tigers. One side of the floor to the other after the first miss. And Ward was wide open in the corner. So we've had Hayes, who has erupted for 13 points, and Ward, who just hit that triple. They have scored their first LSU points in their career tonight. Nice double team move. Oh, that is really slick. Hill, I, I beg your pardon, Bell, double team down low, was still able to slide that in. Six points for him. Hannibal wants it. Hannibal goes strong, takes a step back, tip up, good, and a foul called. Jalen Reed right there to tip it in. Love how he just went straight back up and just tapped it in. Forget about bringing it back down and resetting. Here comes the drive right at you by Hannibal. Jump stop, a little strong. Look how he's got great position. Nobody to contest. So Reed almost volleyballs it in. Yeah, that was a, like a, a setter. Yeah. Marquez Cooper replaces Wilson Rouse. Wilson Rouse with a very nice game tonight. Twenty-one points on seven of fifteen shooting, five of nine from behind the line. Left hand, it's in. Preston Murphy was. Unguarded as he went to the bucket, the freshman out of Barrington, Rhode Island. And that's his second hoop of the season. Hannibal. Well, it was all offensive. Might have pushed yeah. off with a right hand. Extended that arm, got a little clearance there. A little bit of a line change for LSU. Some of the guys getting an opportunity here. By the way, it certainly has been a game that's been in control for LSU. Have you felt like the broadcast has gone differently tonight? I feel like we've had an extra edge because we finally got some real talent at the broadcast table. 
Well, indeed we do. We, it's a rarity that we have this kind of talent at the table, but you know the folks at home will know. But we've been we've had the pleasure of being joined by the SEC Player of the Week, Angel Reese. It's been great to have her here. She wants to get into broadcasting. And we said, hey, we're doing a game. If you'd like to come sit and listen, she's had notes. She's taking notes. She's asked questions. And well, I must say it's been a pleasure working with you because I've realized now the SEC Player of the Week is coming from my job. But it's been great to have you here. We've had a lot of fun. You had what? fun? You had a good time? Good. 20 years, you're out of here. <laughs> That's right. You're out. Another double-double and a big win for the Lady Tigers yesterday. It's been fun, been fun getting to know her and have her here with us. Seven to shoot. That ball is lost on the dribble by Dowdy. But it will stay with uh, the privateers. Four on the shot clock, 41 seconds left in the game. On a night where we saw KJ, uh, KJ Williams, excuse me, not as involved as you're used to seeing, and you know you'll see him much more, just three of five on the, on the, uh, on the night, and Miller just two of eight, and that's one of seven from behind the three-point line. Also in the game right now for the Tigers, Adam Benayoun. And a shot clock violation. And LSU with 30 on the shot clock, 37 seconds left in the game. Tigers have scored more points tonight. And game clock that didn't work, so we'll do it all over again. Privateers ball this time underneath the basket instead of sideline out of bounds. But there's only four on the shot clock. And just like the previous play, we threw it out of bounds. Tiger ball. Now they're going to take another look at it to see, I think, I think the official score or the timekeeper just waved the official off. Said, we'll take care of it. So LSU about to wrap this one up. It's about an eight-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Tigers will just dribble it and not worry about the consequences. Ball down three by Parker Edwards comes up short. Dowdy, a deep deuce. Egamo with a rebound. He covers it up, and this game goes into the win column for LSU as the Tigers win for the third straight time to open this campaign. Victor, it's the second straight year LSU has started 3-0.